everybody, welcome back. Long time no see. Seriously, it's been a while. I'm MK. And I am Sam. And you are listening to East Coast Haunts. We are very excited to be back. We took a little bit of a hiatus. We've been a little bit busy. Sam, do you want to share with the world why? Well, let's see. I am in a musical right now, a musicale. I'm doing the musical Sister Act right now. Um, if anyone's seen the Whoopi Goldberg movie, you may be familiar. It was turned into a musical in the early 2000s. Um, so I am singing and dancing and wearing my nun outfit. Yes. And it's been a busy couple of weeks with Tech Week, and we had some shows last weekend that MK came and saw. It was fabulous, baby. That's a uh. reference to the show, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. Um, well, thank you. You don't really have any other choice but to say that, but I yeah, appreciate but that. But it's the truth anyway. Thank it you really very is. much. So that, and then we've both been, you know, busy with work, yeah, getting ready for our family Christmas party that we're very excited for. Oh, it's going to be so fun. I'm and so excited. And we should do, you know how we went over like with the appetizers and the drinks that we made for Halloween? Yes. We should do um, at the beginning of the episode when it gets closer, like what we're making oh, for that. A hundred percent. You guys aren't getting away scot free no, no, on no. that front. And we also have to talk about our decorations because I'm looking around the apartment right now and MK did some special decorating last night, but Thank I want to maybe we could like post a picture of it. I don't want to give it away. I, I kind of like it. Just wait until it's done, though. Yeah. It's yes. gonna. It's giving very much so Winter Wonderland. Winter Wonderland, Sugar Plum Fairy-esque. Lovely. And then with all of our plants in here, it kind of reminds me of like that greenhouse and Frosty, the snowman. Do you know what I'm talking that about? That brought back a memory that I did not know <laughs> that I had. I haven't seen any of those movies in so long. Maybe. For the Patreon, we should do like a <laughs> review of Christmas. Review movies. Frosty. <laughs> As a 22-year-old and a 24-year-old female reviewing for, <laughs> reviewing movie from like the 1960s. I give it a 6.8 out of 10. It was unimaginative. I, <laughs> and unoriginal. I do love those old-time movies, though. I do, too. I haven't watched a Christmas movie in a while, so maybe, that'll, maybe we'll have to transition to that. Do you know what I heard today from one of my friends? I need some context they, okay. before I guess. Yeah, about Christmas movies. It was about like a classic Christmas movie that they didn't like. And I was like, how do you not like that movie? Um, I feel like one that no one can hate is Elf. So that's That's best. the one. That's what I Why? said. That's what I said. Why? Who doesn't like Elf? I don't know if I can say that. Well, like, I, I guess I mean, why? How could someone not like Elf? Like, what is the part about it that they don't I like? I guess, like, Will Ferrell's character just gets on their nerves. That's ridiculous. That's what I said. I can't say I agree with that at all. I think that they're stupid. Like, that so, might be my sorry. favorite Christmas movie. It's up there, for sure. Like, Zoe De Chanel. Oh, she's so good. James Caan. I don't know who that is. He's the, <laughs> the dad. dad. Okay. Yeah. He actually just recently passed away. He was in The Godfather. Oh, yeah, he yeah. did. Um, and obviously Will Ferrell. And it also has, like, Ralphie from A Christmas Story that plays, like, one of the elves. Oh, like, yeah, a quick little yeah, cameo. Yeah. Did you see that they're doing, like, a... Uh, a second Christmas yes, story? Yes. Do you like the first all one? Grown up? I love... I My mom love loves it. I love, like, a, a Christmas story. I think I've only seen that movie, like, twice. But I think it's cute, too, so... I went through a phase where I was, like, obsessed with it. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I just, like... It's a cute movie. Every year, I feel like I have a new favorite Christmas a movie. A new fixation. Yeah, this year... It's probably gonna... I'm gonna circle on back to It's a Wonderful Life. Okay. Because I just watched that. Which is... I know. I know you love it. I don't like it. It's so good. The ending... I've seen the movie probably upwards of ten times. I cry at the ending every single time. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. It's cute. It's cute. It is. One more final thing I'll say. Because I know we've gone off. Um, But it's been a while. Yeah. My favorite Christmas movie is frozen but not frozen stop it (laughs) okay so this is super quick i promise one new year's eve i feel like it was probably like four years ago three or four it was right before the pandemic yeah um so i guess three years ago we watched this movie called frozen but not the disney one though it's like they get stuck on these teenagers get stuck on top of a ski lift yep and like one of spoiler alert one of them 
like falls off and gets like eaten by wolves one of them like dies of like frostbite and like is like then the last person that's left is like sitting next to the dead body and is like screw it i'm gonna jump off and try to get help and then like his he jumps off this the ski lift and his legs like shoot his leg bone shoots through <laughs> his skin. Oh my god, it's horrible! And we were watching it with our entire family, including our grandparents. Yeah. And it was just... So, I don't know if you remember this, but <laughs> back when that movie first came out, your older sister tried to explain the plot to us. Yes. But she was trying to explain like the dynamic between the three friends. Yes. And two of them are dating, and another one is, like, just their friend. So she described that relationship using high school musical characters. And she was like, basically, it's Troy and Gabriella and then Chad. Yes. So the entire time she was telling us, like, the really gory plot of this movie. You're picturing... I was picturing... Zac Efron's bones going through his skin. And getting mauled by wolves. Although it was a good... It was kind of like a good movie from what I remember. I gotta rewatch it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll we'll see that's like kind of a Christmas... There are like a shocking amount of Christmas horror movies, so we can definitely keep our Patreon up and running. Okay. That sounds great. Oh, speaking of Patreon, we have a new Patreon to shout out. (gasps) Who is it? Her name is MP... I'm not going to say her last name because I don't know if she wants that out there. But we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you, MP. Your support means so much to us. It means and the world. We are very, very flattered. Yes. And hopefully next month, we were just discussing this, we're going to try to buy a new mic. Yes, with our money from Patreon. Yes. We're very excited. And So whoever wrote that one review saying <laughs> that we were unlistenable... Give us Check another back. try. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not done yet. We're done. We haven't given up. <laughs> but anyway, I think that's pretty, pretty much, much it. it. Yeah, for catching up. For now, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while, so this was a little bit of a longer intro. Yes. But I am going to tell you guys about the Sorel Weed House in Savannah, Georgia. And I know literally nothing about this. So I'm very excited. Well, actually, don't say you know nothing about this house because you might recognize it from the very first scene of a very famous movie. It's going to be like Gone with the Wind? No. Okay. You, I guarantee you've seen this movie before. Does it take place in the South? Yes. Okay. So the opening of this movie is actually shot from the roof of the Sorrel Weed House. Okay. And it begins with a feather floating down and it pans to a shot of Savannah and then the main character sitting on a bench. Oh, is it Forrest Gump? It sure okay, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't that kind of neat? That would have been embarrassing if I didn't get well, that. Well, <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. I, I was reading that and I was like, that's so neat. Yeah. I got to include that in the episode. So, the Sorrel Weed House is located at 6 West Harris Street in Savannah, Georgia, and it's one of the first of two homes in Savannah to be made a Georgia state landmark. Wow. I know, pretty neat. It's unique in the fact that it is a beautiful example of both Greek revival and Regency architecture, which I'm not, like, totally sure... Well, Greek Revival is definitely like the, the, like the big columns. Greco-Roman. Yeah. yeah. And then Regencies, I guess, like... I just sure fancy. Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, if you can't tell, neither of us were architect majors. <laughs> but it was designed by a famous architect, Charles Kluski, who also... Charles Kluski, of course. I know. Duh. Who also designed the governor's mansion. Okay. So this guy's kind of like a big wig. Impressive resume. Yes. He was hired by uh, Francis Sorrell, which is who the house is named after, in 1837 to build this house for him and his wife. And those two moved in in 1840. Okay. Now, Francis Sorrell, I've got some thoughts on him. I'm going to give you (laughs) the background. I'm assuming he was problematic. Oh, Since he lived in the South. You know. Yeah. He was kind of, like, I, he's obviously, like, not a great person, mm-hmm. but he's also just kind of, like, a shit for reasons <laughs> that, like, <laughs> for that many you'll reasons. see. Like, he just, I, he just bugs me. Oh, and you'll I see why. Really. So, Francis Sorrell was a wealthy shipping merchant in Savannah, and he was well-known and well-liked among the city, like, higher-ups. Okay. Right. Uh, he was originally from San Domingue, which is now Haiti. Oh. And I'm sorry if I said that wrong. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. His family fled and was separated from him 
because of a slave revolt that was going on in Haiti. Okay. But Francis kind of ended up in the hands of some of these slaves and they refused to kill him and instead let him work out of Port-au-Prince until he immigrated to the U.S. in 1820. Okay. So he was shown mercy by these slaves when they very well could have not. And how does he repay this in kind? I'm sure he will not be repaying it. No. Mr. Man, despite literally (laughs) owing his life to slaves, became, you guessed it, a slave trader. Yeah, not surprising, but, unfortunately. Yeah. Don't worry, he also dealt in salt, molasses, cotton, and butter. And humans. Yes, and humans. So That's gross. Yeah. Disgusting. Really? Oh, he... I, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say he gets even worse. Like, oh, he dear literally... God. That's why I'm, I'm saying, like, he's literally so... A shit. <laughs> yeah, he's Trademark. literally a shit. Um, he married a woman named Lucinda Moxley okay. when she was just 17 years old. Okay. Sus. Yep. Uh, she died five years later Ooh. of yellow fever in 1827. So how do you, how do you go ahead and mourn your dead wife? He's going to get married to another 17 year old, I bet. No. Try again. He, he went for a little bit older this time. <laughs> 18. <laughs> He actually married a 23-year-old, which wow. is not like... How old, I wonder how old he was. Um, I think he was probably around 27. Okay. A little more normal. A little... Yeah. It's it's not that bad. Guess who this 23-year-old was? Was it his sister? Her sister, I mean. Not it his, sure not his was. sister. It sure was. He married his dead wife's younger sister, Matilda, Ew. in 1829. So that's less than two years after he buried his 22-year-old wife, he has now moved on to his, her 23-year-old sister. Listen, I know things were, like, wonky back then. It was, like, acceptable in the South, back then, but... That's so weird. It's, like, how... Even if that's, like, the social norm at the time, why would that not make you, like, stop and consider... Yeah, because like, even if it's a social norm, like, morally, wouldn't you feel, like, Do you not have emotions? That's yeah. weird. I would feel gross about that. Keep it that. in the family, they say. Ew. I, like, yeah, but not with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, they had several children together, one of whom, named Gilbert Moxley Sorrell, was one of the youngest generals in the Civil War, and he fought on the Confederate side, which, like, okay. Not surprised. Also, I'm sorry. I have one more thing to say. Yes. If either of my sisters did that to me, I would haunt them so bad oh I, and i would never let them have a night I of sleep literally but like also imagine watching that like imagine one of your sisters getting married and dying which is horrible yes but then your other sister like going for it with this guy i it's, it's literally i'm like just so hung up on that like ew but anyway i'm sorry continue and like no me either <laughs> i i can't even we'll discuss that. later we will uh so this Gilbert Moxley Sorrell, he was one of the youngest generals in the Civil War. He was on the Confederate side. And he's the son he's of, of, of the, Francis Sorrell. Okay. Which, again, your dad is from Haiti, was saved by slaves, and now you're fighting yeah. to keep slavery in the South. And like I know that obviously they were a product of their time. But, but it's still... Read the room a yeah. little bit here. Like, come on. Come on. If your dad is literally alive, you are alive by proxy yes. because of because a slave showed your dad mercy. Anyway, well, I guess he didn't really have a great role model to look up to yeah. in that account. Yeah, but whatever. That's true. Whatever. Uh, in 1859, the house is bought by Henry D. Weed, and he took hell her- yeah, <laughs> which is kind of like a dank last name. Henry D. Weed. <laughs> um, it is a dank last name. He took ownership of the house from 1862, and then it remained in the Weed family until And is this because um, the fir- Sorrell died? No. Okay. He just was like... Sold it. Yeah. Time to downsize. I'm retiring, etc. Yeah. He, he, I think, just like offered him money, and Sorrell was like, okay. yeah, that sounds good. So Sorrell didn't go far. He literally moved right next door, 12 West Harris Street. All right. And called it a day. But... 
the house is the site of several tragedies, which is probably why it's one of the top 10 Halloween destinations in the U.S. Wow. Isn't that kind of fun? Yeah. Top 10 Halloween destinations is that's really like, fun. That's like their distinction. They're like at maybe like six or seven. Well, I thought we were going to go to Salem next year, but maybe we'll be going to Georgia. That would be kind of nice because yeah. it's like starting to get kind of cold up here. Yeah. And go down. We could, yeah. Okay. Take a nice little uh, warm vacation. Although I do want to do Salem too. I know. So maybe we could do Salem in the summer? I think we should do Salem in the summer because I was just looking at Airbnbs a second ago. Um, and there was something in Sa- I wasn't like specifically looking in Salem, <laughs> but it was like a super cheap um, Airbnb in March. And I was like, oh, it's because no one wants to be there. Yeah. The- yeah. So... So this place kind of seems like it might be a good Halloween destination because I had really never heard of this house before. Yeah, so, I hadn't either. And obviously everyone flocks to Salem yeah. for Halloween. But also, I see that and I raise you Lizzie Borden house. <gasps> for Halloween. Do people want to see us like go and risk our lives by staying in this house? Let us I know. I think Yes. Let and we will know. dress up as Lizzie Borden and her sister, her mutton-eating sister. Her mutton-eating. What was her name? Like, Emma. Yes, it was. Something it was, boring. It was Emma. Um, or the Farnsworth house, and we can provoke... Uh, <gasps> the Civil George. War. Yeah. Oh, my God. The one that throws chairs. Yeah, which one? Maybe we'll do, like, a poll. Oh, no, it was Walter. Walter was oh, his yeah, name. Oh, yeah, Walter. Too many evil spirits. Too many, like, women-hating spirits. I know. I know. They all get kind of mixed up. Anyway, back to the story. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the area of Savannah where the house is located. Okay. So, most people know that obviously Savannah was like a stronghold in the Civil War, Mm -hmm. but it was also a pretty important place in the Revolutionary War. So there was a battle that took place called the Siege of Savannah in the fall of 1779, Mm -hmm. and it was the the second deadliest battle in the Revolutionary War. It was called the Bloodiest Hour, and over 1,000 people died in one hour. How? Because the guns back then weren't even that, like, powerful. Yeah, but they were using a lot of cannons, apparently. Supposedly in this, a lot of people lost their lives to cannon. That's where they get you. A cannon can take out... I would say, like, a good amount of people, yeah. right? In my experience. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, when I was fighting in the Revolutionary War, <laughs> I saw a lot of good people go to the cannons. <laughs> They're like, I came in the <laughs> Isn't it kind of insensitive when you think about it in this context? How kids are like, cannonball! <laughs> like, they jump into the pool. Like, yeah, but like... Because, like, people actually died from that. Now that I'm thinking about... I'm not going to cancel children. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not above canceling children. <laughs> cancel Love all Anna. children. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> children are over. 2023. All right. Anyway. Um, so, the British won this battle, and they retained their stronghold over Savannah. And it was a victory over both American and French forces. So, okay. this is in the Revolutionary War when... Everyone's favorite fighting Frenchman, fighting Frenchman comes Lafayette, in and he brings all the French troops. And okay. he's like, I pray that France has sent a ship. <laughs> you do the whole, you do the whole guns and ship, <laughs> guns and ships rap. I pray that France has sent a ship. I don't think that's a lie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it might have been. No, know. it definitely is. No, it is from Hamilton. No, I'm saying it is. It oh, is oh, a lie. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. God, I literally can't. I can't think right now. I pray that this is a <laughs> Is he finish. a vampire? I missed that <laughs> I can't do a French accent. I pray that Zil has sent his sheep. Exactly. Delete that. I'm sorry. No, I'm keeping it in. <laughs> um, so, one of the most important sites of the battle is called Madison Square, and it's directly across from the site where the Sorel Weed House would be built. Okay. Uh, there may or may not have been barracks on mm-hmm. the land that the Sorrel William. I almost I said Sorrel William. I was thinking for Albert. That seemed crazy. <laughs> um, the barracks may or may not have been on the land that the Sorrel William. Oh now I don't even remember what it was. Sorrel weed. Oh, Sorrel weed. Okay, I was like, wait, I don't think it sounds wrong. The, the barracks may or may not have been on what is now the Sorrel Weed House. 
<laughs> um, and there is a possible incident. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're laughing because Mary Kate keeps saying Sorel Williams because she thinks it's Pharrell Williams. Like she's <laughs> instead of Sorel weed. <sighs> Guys, I'm a little out of practice. We're a little loopy. We're a little loopy right now. It's been a long day for both of us. <laughs> um, so there was a possible incident that may have occurred on the land of the Sorel Weed House where 12 British soldiers were killed by cannon fire. Oh, wow. Which is, yes, obviously a lot. Um, typically, bodies, though, as it was like customary for that time period during wars, bodies were buried in a trench... And it was at the edge of Madison Square, so it's, like, literally right next to this house. Oh, okay, I see. And there was obviously no time during this battle to differentiate between living and dead, so many, <gasps> of, like, of the injured were buried alive. That's terrifying. And the Sorrel really Reed House freaky. is likely buried over some of those remains. That'll make a haunting. I mean, if that's not a recipe for a haunting, I, yeah, I don't know what is. bodies alive under yes. a house. Buried alive and then build a house over them. Oh. What could go wrong? All right, are you ready for some tea? Yes. I'm so, so ready. you may think that Francis and Matilda, who is the younger sister that he remarried, yeah. you may think that that's like a recipe for a happy marriage. I do, Obviously, because yes. they were starting off with like such great foundation. foundation. Yeah. Um. So it was like a happy marriage for the most part but, until it wasn't. Okay. Because we already know that Francis is a little shit. Yeah. So he had an affair with. I knew it. Yeah, obviously. With one of his slaves named Molly. Oh. And so I do want to take this time to like say, obviously, this affair probably. I, I hate to even call it an affair. Because it wasn't. Because consensual, you know that yeah. it was probably not consensual. Yeah. And he probably forced her into having mm-hmm. intercourse with him. So, really not great. Um, I am going to use the term affair, though. Okay. But just know but we know, we yeah, know, we know it's, even, it's not yeah. consensual. Uh, so, he did have an affair with one of his slaves named Molly, and he even gave her her own room in the Sorrel Weed house to hide her from Matilda. Okay. Which I'm like... That makes no sense. Maybe he shouldn't have hid her in the house that he shares with Matilda if he didn't want... Yeah, I don't understand how out. that's... I guess... He was figuring that she would be checking, like, the slaves' quarters. Okay. And he just gave her a regular room. I don't know. It's so weird. Uh, obviously, didn't really take her that long to find out. Yeah. So, she was kind of racked with grief. Okay. She can't imagine losing her husband. So, she jumps off the second floor balcony. Oh. And split her skull on the concrete courtyard. I did not think it was gonna... I did not think that was gonna go like that yeah i know oh so how old was she uh i actually don't know what year this was but molly realizing that she would have been charged with murder and an illicit affair hung herself inside the house so we have a oh my double god or double suicide oh that's so sad i know and so guess and it's like molly didn't really even have a choice no she's she probably didn't. gonna get killed anyway exactly well Hold on, okay. Because I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so the ultimate shithole, Francis Sorrell. He remained in his little house, his twelve West Harris house, until he died of a stroke at seventy years old. Ew, he stayed there. Yeah, that's messed up. He's just like this guy has no redeeming qualities to me. Sorry, yeah, he's I gross. Don't he's like disgusting. Him. So a lot of people question whether or not like the stories that we tell about these hauntings, whether or not they're real, whether or not there is a historical basis. And for this particular house, yes, it is. There's record of two Mollies living at the Sorrel Weed House. Mm -hmm. Matilda is also on record. They were both likely real. Uh, Matilda, though, however, likely killed herself at 12 West Harris, which is the house that the Sorrells moved into after moving out of the okay. Sorrell weed house. But they're literally right next to each okay. other. So So then wouldn't Molly also have probably killed herself at the newer house? Probably. Okay. So But they're right next to each other, so I'm sure a spirit yeah. could easily travel in between. We've talked about this yeah. before. We don't think spirits are tethered to one particular place. Right. Um it's also probable that Molly did not commit suicide but was instead lynched when the affair oh came to light. Oh my god. Which is horrible. It like turns my stomach. These are yeah. These are these are really bad. Yeah, I know. Horrible. It's it makes me so sad to think about 
I'm like, it's like, how do you even transition? Yeah, I, I don't know how to transition. But now we're going to talk about... Okay. So, it's possible that Molly and Matilda both never left the Sorrel Weed House. Yeah. Obviously, this was a site of great tragedy for them. It's no wonder that their spirits are still Lingering. tethered to the house. Right. Yeah. So, Matilda is said to appear in the Sorrel Weed House as either a full-body apparition or a shadowy silhouette walking the halls. Ooh. Others claim to have looked in a mirror and seen her reflection behind them, but when they turn around, no one is there. Okay. Which, can I just say, I think I've said this before, mirrors... Yeah, you have. ...are, like, my number one Spooky. irrational fear. Like, I am, like, scared of mirrors. There's I so think. much lore behind there are all- mirrors. <laughs> Sam has become obsessed with using the term lore. I, it is literally so funny. Everything There's, has like, the lore. lore Every, everything has lore. Like, mirrors... <laughs> but mirrors do have a lot of they lore. They do. Like, in, like, the Gettysburg... Or not the... Or no, they're the Farnsworth. The yeah. Farnsworth, yeah. And um, Ed and Lorraine had, like, yeah. that... Like, mirrors, there's just something suspicious. And I they don't... say that you should never, like, have a mirror facing your bed. Yes, the feng shui. Oh, no, I definitely have a, my full... Su- my, um, body mirror. I wasn't gonna tell called. you, but, like, yes, I do. Moved, I'm literally moving it tonight. <laughs> I'm not even joking. It's just... You're not supposed to have it, like, facing the foot of your bed. Because well, that is exactly like... where mine is facing. <laughs> <laughs> Which, when my mom and I were setting up my room, you should like, have said something. Now, well, I didn't want to freak you out. Yeah, but maybe, maybe my life would be going a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, poor you. <laughs> my life is so hard. Maybe you would have a better roommate. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, but actually, tonight I am gonna move it because I'm a little spooked it's okay i get it when my mom and i were setting up my room in this apartment she was like how about we put like your dresser here my dresser has a big mirror on it and she was like positioning it across from my bed i was like actually i think it would really look better up against that wall you're like the feng shui the feng shui is just off yeah it's not giving what it's supposed to yeah exactly i think that these are good life lessons. Better to be safe than sorry. Exactly. You heard it here first. Never have a mirror facing the end of your bed and never have two mirrors facing each other. Oh, yeah. Because that I would. supposedly creates a portal. I don't want no portals in our I'm not trying to, humble apartment. No, I'm not. Especially after what happened at Penhurst. Yeah. I don't want anything following me home. You know? I'm good. This is my little safe space. I'm good. All right. Anyway. So... The mirror, Creepy. sometimes people claim to see Matilda behind them. Molly also still remains in the Sorrel Weed House. So before the house was open to the public and like they started giving tours, uh, both historic and paranormal, mm-hmm. it was like briefly, it was vacated for a while, okay. but then it was briefly rented out as like an office space. And a man working there claimed he constantly felt uneasy. Like, every time he would walk into work, he just felt, like, all the energy drained out of him, which, like, same. But, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, sir, I don't But know. I think it's because my cubicle is not phasing anyone. Yeah. Either, so. <laughs> the feng shui is off in your the cubicle. The feng shui <laughs> is all wrong. Um, but anyway, he would just walk in. He would, like, feel off. Okay. He would just not feel great. Uh, and... It turns out that his office was in the old slave quarters. Oh. So there yeah, was speculation that there might be some energy with yeah. residing there. Uh, many people touring the house feel sick or drowsy. Some people feel a choking sensation as if they were being hung by a rope. Oh, wow. Which is obviously In scary. Yeah. yeah, a reference to the way the Molly one. Um, the house will zap cell phone batteries... So people will walk in with a full cell phone battery and they'll walk out and it'll be completely dead, which that actually did happen to us at the Farnsworth house. If you can remember that. Yeah. I walked in with a full cell phone battery and my, it was dead like, by the end. That's weird. Which that is, is weird. weird. And then I was like, I need to get a new phone. Yeah. But maybe it could have been ghosts. Who, Who knows? knows? Or it was just Apple was coming out with that new iPhone and they were and like, they were all like, right. Hit the glitch button. <laughs> <laughs> Um, The living room is particularly noisy at night. Guests will say that they hear the sounds of a social gathering, which is funny because the Sorrel Weed House was used by Francis Sorrel as a meeting place for all the social elite of Savannah. Okay. But as soon as someone approaches the room, it immediately goes silent. Which, like, that's 
Like, creepy. it's not that the noise dies down. Like, it literally, like, someone flipped a switch. That's creepy. Which is, like, yeah, it's creepy, but that's kind of fascinating, yeah. right? It's it's almost as if they know yeah. that someone's coming. They're trying to piss you off. Like, they're trying to mess with you. Yeah. You know what I they're mean? They're trying to freak you out a little bit. Or, like, get you to, like, wake like, up and come downstairs and, like, yell. And there's, there's no one there. there. It's quiet hours, baby. Um, <laughs> but people are think that this may be a residual haunting from, like, the high energy that used to yeah. be in the house. Makes sense. Uh, a lot of people say that they feel a dark aura or an evil entity in the basement, which Ooh. is probably some energy from the bodies underneath the house. It's always, it's like, basement. the restless, yeah, restless spirits. Yeah. Which is so just, interesting to me that it's like oh it is always the basement yeah like it really is i probably it probably does have something to do with the fact that it's on the like you were saying like right by the ground i mean yeah. where all these people were buried or buried alive like yeah. yeah and i also think well also going into the next little fact um you can hear the sounds of like warfare and gun sh- gunshots but especially at night so that's what oh. we're saying is like there are times of the day times of the year like areas of each particular house that hauntings do seem to be more prevalent yeah so a lot of the times people say like the basement and the attic which are like the two extremities of the Mm -hmm. house if you think about it then nighttime yes and winter is apparently the most common time to see like an apparition really because apparently and i'm no scientist i'm not a paranormal expert Apparently, there's something with the static electricity is high in the winter. Okay. And the spirits can feed off of that and use that energy to manifest. Okay. Which is pretty interesting. I never knew that. No, me either. And I don't even know if I would have guessed winter to be the most I would have never either. But here we are. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. And that pretty much wraps up the Sorrel Weed House. It is open for tours. You can go visit uh, like I said, it's a pretty popular Halloween destination, yeah. so maybe but you can go, go anytime, on, anytime, and maybe if you go around Halloween time next year, maybe you'll see us there. Maybe, maybe we can grab a slice of peach pie together. <laughs> I get my peaches down in Georgia. Yo, yes. <laughs> That's all I know about Georgia. Yeah. Well, I think that this house is very. It's very quintessential haunted house yes it's like a classic haunted house but with like a it's not as quote-unquote i guess fun because it's like the past is so sad like molly oh like that it's really that's really sad yeah it makes me sad but there is like this is like a classic haunted house because it has the lore behind it the lore the lore of the house yeah and like and then you get to see the apparitions and all the different hauntings it it reminds me a little bit of um the Farnsworth house, Me just too. because like it was the like during the wars and stuff, yeah. and like, the sol- dead soldiers. Oh, I'm shocked that there's no like reports of apparitions of soldiers in the house. Wouldn't you think? Yes, you would. You would think there'd be, or like the like the twelve British people that were killed yeah. like, right by it. Like you would, you would think, think that yeah. that like would come back into the story. I know. But... Well, maybe that's for us to find out one day. Us yeah. to discover. We're gonna bring our dowsing rods, and we'll bring you the answers, and we will find proof yes we will um before we close this episode out i actually do want to say like one more little thing that i forgot in the beginning yes recently um jackie lentz she's an author invited me to be on her pop well she invited us but yes you could not be there uh oh, invited us in, in, in high demand i am <laughs> <laughs> she's a busy bee um invited us to be on her podcast jackie just chats it's available in all the same places that you can find our podcast. She's a really incredible storytelling mm-hmm. podcaster. She spins some great tales. She's got a few murder mysteries that I haven't had the chance to sit down and take a look at yet. But believe you me, there's nothing I love more than a good murder mystery. So I will be doing that very soon. And she has a very comforting voice. She does. A it's like voice. a good podcast to put on... When you're like doing your nighttime routine or like even at work when you just need like a little bit of comfort. In your exactly. Yeah. It's a comforting voice. Exactly. It is. It's a, and it's a very like, if you get freaked out by our podcast, you know how people watch like funny shows yes. afterwards, this might be a good podcast to turn on. But anyway, check out her two latest episodes. I think by the time this episode comes out, part two will already be up. 
But uh, check us out because I'm talking a little bit about uh, Victorian Christmas yes. haunting a very famous British house. I won't give it away which one. And like a classic Christmas tale that took place there. So branching Ooh. out a little bit from the East Coast for this podcast. Going across the pond. Occasion. A hop, skip, and a jump. Across the pond to Victorian England. England. It's very much so like a Christmas Carol vibe. That's what I was picturing. Yes. And so that was a blast. I really had so much fun talking with her. Please go check her podcast out and let us know what you think. Yes. And uh, I think that's I think that's, that's it. it. We'll be back soon. Much sooner than two and a half weeks, I promise. For sure. We'll be back next week. Yes, we will. With And we've got some fun Patreon episodes coming. Oh, we're, we're about to record one. I'm so excited. So anyway, keep listening and we will talk to you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.